this year has been very tough for me and uh, I really, uh, it took a lot of courage for me to come and talk here. Uh, I lost my son Raghav in the beginning of the year. Uh, it was like, it was unimaginable. It was so difficult for me to handle the pain, the torture. I lost uh, all faith in God and uh, it just left me totally in the pieces and I was devastated. And uh, my family was so worried about me because slowly I would I was becoming a recluse and I was just not able to cope. So uh, it is then that my daughter, when she was so worried about me, she heard about Nanandi and she introduced me to Nanandi. And uh, that is where probably I found myself on the path of healing. I met Nanandi. She asked me to read her book, Sound of Silence. And after that, once I connected with auntie, she was able to get me such beautiful messages from her son, Paul, who was in the care of Meher Baba. And uh, such lovely messages about Raghav, stating that Raghav is in peace and he's happy where he is. And so we should also try to move maybe try to live life we cannot just you know uh, keep thinking about the what has happened and getting stuck in that moment so uh, it healed me a lot and i have nanaanti here with me and i would request her to you know just uh, sum it all for your uh, information so that there are people who might need this kind of healing, they might need this kind of help, they might not know. But then there is a way out where you can handle your pain. You can try and listen it. So I have Nanaanti here. Thank you Nanaanti and thank you so much for uh, you know taking your time and talking to me. And also thank you so much for the healing you have with me and my family. And, uh, I would like you to talk about, you know, how you started, uh, you know, connecting with Dal and uh, how it all, I know it's, it's going to be difficult, but it will help people, so. Ah, uh, thank you, Ruchi. Um, there's a lot that I have to share and there's a lot that I have to say, but maybe I'll just say it in short just now. Um, Carl was born a premature child. My, he's my son. My, he's my second son. He was born a premature child. And when he was born, he, su he, was, he suffered a lot in the hospital and it took a long time for him to come home. But as he grew up, he became stronger and stronger and he had a passion for horses. Uh, so since our whole family was already into racing, uh, he started riding. And of course, riding became a passion for him. And as he grew up, he went to school and he passed his exams and everything. Eventually, we allowed him to ride professionally at the race course. He started riding when he was 17 years old. And by the time he was 18, he had already won a lot of races and he was on his way to, maybe to winning the championship. Um, he was already ahead in the jockey tally. On the last day of the races, there was an accident and it was, it was only a three horse race, but a horse crossed in front of him, his horse fell and he fell. And that started him going to the hospital and uh, of course he won the championship. He was not there to accept the championship, it was very hurtful for us. but. 18 days he suffered in the hospital, eventually he passed away. So it was uh, a very traumatic time for us and the, the whole family was shattered. Uh, we sat down, everything was dark in the house and it was five years later that my husband was sitting in his chair and he was reading the newspaper and he read about a lady who connected with her 
children uh, who had passed away. So he gave me the newspaper and he said, look, see, read this. I read it. It was fascinating, but still unbelievable. So I put it away. After a little while, I felt, let me read it again, let me read it again. I took it up, I read it, and I went to meet the lady. The lady was her lady was the name of Mrs. Bhavnagri. And she told me her story. And she told me how she started writing, automatic writing. And she said, why don't you try? I said, no, ma'am. I am not that kind of person. I won't be able to do it. She said, no, no, you try. I'm sure you'll be able to do it. Come on, take the pencil. She, she gave me the pencil and I put it on the paper, but nothing much came, just a little dot. So she said, never mind, you go home and you keep trying. So I went home and I shut the doors and everything. And the next morning, I put my pen on the paper and I, I was wondering what would come. And suddenly my hand started moving. It went round and round and round and I was so excited. I went to the telephone and I phoned her and I said, Ma'am, it's working, it's working, my pen is moving. She said, yes, you carry on, you carry on. That is how I started my writing. Mm -hmm. And slowly, slowly, the word Meher started coming in the writing. And I said, who's Meher? So, so eventually, I found out through another medium that Meher was Meher Baba. Mm -hmm. I said, who's Meher Baba? So, Carl wrote, he is my guru. Go where he is, go where he is, go where he is. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, eventually I found out that Mehar Baba had an ashram in Ahmednagar. Mm -hmm. So, I made my way there and that is how my journey began. Mm -hmm. Now, I put all this down in a book. The book is called Sounds of Silence. And you can see if I can find it. This is the book. I wrote it exactly as it came, exactly all the instances that happened when I went to Merabad, how Baba showed me that Carl is there with him. So many signs Baba has given me and so many pictures and statues and you know stones and so many signs Baba has given me that now I just can't get away from it. And I believe totally in what is there in my life. Now the book was such a success that brought so many people crowding around. So many people went to Merabah, so many people came to meet me. So I was impressed to make a second and third book. The second and third book is called Listening to the Silence and Beyond the Silence. These are the, this is the trilogy, right? Yeah, these are, these are the three books. Yes. Now the book has had such a great impact on everyone. It's now translated into Chinese, it's translated into Russian, it's translated into Hindi, and it goes on. So that's really gone worldwide. And a lot of people have benefited by going to Merabad, by going to Baba, by asking Baba for help, and for coming back feeling so happy so peaceful and so happy in their life that it really makes me feel very, very good. And that's what happened. Ruchi came to me uh, in April 2019. And actually, I just told her my story. And then I gave her the book to read. And that's how her journey began. She eventually it, of course, it took time for her to read everything, to, to understand everything, to make her way to Merabah, to start believing in Baba. It takes everyone time, but eventually it happened, and that is why she is here today. That is why she's asked to make this video, so that it could help other people to understand why we are doing all this, why we are writing, why we are communicating, and for them to know that there is help coming. If there is Baba there, if you are in pain, if you're in health, if, you're, if you need help, and if you're in bad health, if you have a problem, Baba's always there to help you. So that is why now... And Aunty, in your second book also, you have mentioned that all the people who have come to you for help, 
and how you have connected with Carl and given them beautiful messages for their loved ones who are who have probably crossed over to the other side. So, uh, would you like to tell them about that also? That you see, there's there's also a way that you can communicate, but. Since Baba didn't all really believe in the occult, I do not encourage everyone to do it. Okay. Especially the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Because Baba says you have to make your own choices. Correct. You have to get on in your life. Mm -hmm. You have to make your mistakes and you have to learn by your mistakes. Okay. But if it means connecting with some your loved one who's passed away, and Ruchi was so hurt and so in so much pain that I decided that it was okay for her to do the communication. That's why I taught her how to do it. I gave her the whole instructions and everything, and that's how she started doing her communication. She started off by getting scratches and words, and eventually she got sentences, and eventually she is communicating with her child, and she's feeling so much better. So what I want to tell you is that there is a way that you can get help. All you need to have is faith. If you have faith, if you know that there's somebody to there to support you, if you know that there's somebody there to help you, just go, make the effort and go. Like Baba says, you make the effort, I will give you the victory. Correct. Then also, that is why, because of all this, I have now dedicated my life to trying to make other people happy. Like Baba always says, real happiness lies in making others happy. And that is why I do my best. I do my best to do that for all those who are, who have gone through life having problems like I had, losing a child like I had, and having other problems which come in life in their way. But it's always Baba to help them and Baba to take them on. And eventually to meet them when they go to the other side and look after them over there. Okay. So I think, uh, thank you so much okay. Auntie for sharing this okay. journey with us. And I'm sure that people who are listening, it will benefit them in some way or the other. And uh, I have been to Mehrabad. Yeah. I have been to Baba Samadhi and I know what it is yeah. like. So for me, it's really been very, very, you know, a peaceful, a serene, and it's given me all the peace, the fact that I'm, you know, sitting here and talking and I'm trying to get back to my life. Uh, it's all because of Baba and the direction which you gave me. So thank you so much. Yes. And the same message I want to give to all who are listening, that there is help, there are ways. If you are in pain, please try and heal yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you.